and practice a Pilates on the ball program. So we'll find our ways to our back. Pilates footwork. Uh, we'll go heels together, toes apart. That's the Pilates stance. Inhale, roll the ball out. And exhale, draw it back in. So my goal here is to maintain a pretty straight trajectory. There's going to be a little side-to-side -side movement there. But I'm just starting to come into awareness of my spine from head to tail. A sense of length as I reach out. And then preserving that length as I bend the hips and knees back in. So I'm not tucking or rounding. Trying to use my core strength to maintain more of a neutral pelvis. As I continue here, I'm bringing my feet parallel to each other. Knees and thighs together. Gently hugging into the midline. So a parallel foot stance. And then if I was on the reformer, I would move to the heels on. So let's try that a few times. Very active feet, drawing those toes towards you, pressing out and pulling in and crossing out and drawing in. Inhale as you press out, exhale as you sink in. And one more time here. And then if I were to go to the outside of my foot bar in the reformer, I'd have my heels towards the outside of the ball, kind of like a little rolling pin. Inhale, roll out. Exhale, draw in. Inhale to press and exhale to pull. Again, not tucking or rounding the hips. It's okay to have an imprinted spine. However, if we live in this constantly curled, tucked position, we're only going to get tighter in those hip flexors. So, so create a little bit of separation of neutral pelvis, hip flexion, but not tucking, not jamming the low back into the mat. It's partly just being adaptable, being able to move your body in a variety of different ways and not feeling stuck, right? <laughs> not feeling quarantined in your body. Second set, take the hands behind your head. Let's curl the head and shoulders up. Hold the curl. Inhale, press it out. Exhale, sink the belly, pull it in. Inhale, parallel feet. Maintaining midline. Really working to create control, one of our principles of Pilates. <clears throat> control in the movement of the extremities. Control in the breath. Trying to deepen that breath. Maintain this uh, extension of the hips and knees. Curl the upper body. Just do a little pressing down with those thighs. We could do our 100 here, bringing the palms out in front. Inhale in two, three, four, five, and out two, three, four, five, and in two, four, five, and out two, three, four, five. I can still make those little micro intrinsic adjustments of lengthening my tailbone, of zipping my abdominals in and up, of breathing in a way that every exhale draws the waistband together, like you're just tightening your belt one notch. One more time here. Inhale for five, and exhale for five, and rest yourself back down. All right, let's do the roll up. So take the ball now between the hands. Extend the legs. Move the arms overhead. Let's uh, repeat that a few times. Inhale the arms down. Exhale, carry the arms overhead. Can you do that without overarching the back? Inhale to return. Good. Exhale, carry the ball back overhead. Flex your toes. Pull your toes to your shins. Here's our roll up. Float the arms. Curl the head. Peel your body up. Pull your belly back as you stretch over. And then draw the abdominals back. Start to roll yourself back down. Let's do that again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, peeling over, pulling the belly back as you stretch and return. Good. One more time here. Float the arms, peel, bending up, stretch. Let the ball just rest by the toes. Feel the width of your back. Breathe there and then return everything back down. So the rollover. We'll modify the rollover a couple different ways to do so. Take the ball between uh, the inner aspects of the feet. <coughs> 
And just pausing here, find your breath. Use those inner thighs a bit to gently press into the ball. At the same time, see if you can gently sink the abdominals in towards your spine. So there's a ton of energy. Just because you're not moving doesn't mean that uh, you're not using your muscles. As I squeeze, as I sink, as I lengthen head to tail, there's great energy and strength being developed in the body. Let's take this a step further. So on the rollover, we typically start at about 45 degrees. The legs pick up, they carry over, and we roll ourselves gently through the spine. And again, we lift up, we carry over, and we roll through the spine. One more time, inhale, exhale, lift, and roll everything back through. Bend the knees, put the left heel on the ball, take the right knee, pull it into your chest. Straighten and bend a few times. Hold the up. Lengthen the tailbone. Just a straight leg stretch. A little bit of a hamstring stretch. And then pause at 90. Press your thigh into your hands. And a little release. Do that again. As you press the right thigh into your hands, gently press down with the left hamstring into the ball. Sink the belly. <laughs> a lot of things we do at once. One more time. Press into the hands, press down into the ball, sink the belly into the back, and lengthen head to tail. Rest the arms by your hips. Here's our circles. Cross your body, sweep down to the side and up three. Inhale, exhale around for two. One more time, circling around and reverse. Can you keep that left side quite stable? Sink the belly down, finding fluidity in your range of motion. Hug that knee in one more time. Give it a nice stretch. And then switch sides. Right heel presses down, left leg extends up, we bend and we straighten. Bend and straighten. Hold the straight left leg, Find that hamstring stretch a couple times in and out. Inhale, and exhale, release. One more time, draw it in. Release, hold it still for a isometric. Press the thigh into the hands, and release. Press, and release, good. All right, here's our circles. Arms press down by your side, shoulders open. Cross, sweep around and up three. Inhale, exhale, around two. Stretch, circle around for one. Reverse, go out, down, cross, and up. Can you maintain that abdominal tone throughout your circle? And then hug the knee back in. Give it a stretch. Nice work. Bring yourself up to sitting. Let's do a little bit, uh, let's do spine stretch. There's, like the foam roller, there's so many options. I kind of had to pick and choose, and we can do a couple series this way. So for spine stretch, legs extend, arms reach, feel like you're growing taller, inhale here. As we exhale, you're going to just take a gentle curl, drawing your belly back as you stretch over. Less about reaching from the arms, more about energizing the side bodies. Find that elastic quality. Uh, from the armpit towards the hip, and then roll yourself back up. So these lateral seams of the body, these, these edges, inhale and tall, exhale, curl and lengthen. So it's not a collapse. We're not just allowing gravity to pull us down. We're actually lifting up through our core. My rib cage is picking up towards the ceiling and breathing into that back body. And I'm constantly drawing the abdominals gently in towards the back so that I feel a stretch through this lumbar region. Roll yourself back up. Take the hands behind your head. Press your head into your hands. Find uh, a bit of head ramping. So there's this length that exists. Not hyperextending up. Not overly flexing down. Just creating uh, a picking up a drawing up, a lengthening through 
through the crown of the head. From there, inhale, center. Exhale, twist to one side. Inhale, back center. Exhale, twist opposite. Continue there. Exhale, twist. Now I'm trying not to move the ball, not move the hips, but to find thoracic rotation. We get tight in this upper thoracic region. It's designed to rotate us. And when we lose that rotation, if you take the arms out wide, then our back says, well, maybe we rotate from our neck, maybe we rotate from our low back. That's not the ideal place to uh, create rotation from. So use your breath, keep the hips gently still, and then find that reaching and return. Good, we'll do our saw. So for the saw, reach the arms wide, rotate right, back palm presses in, reach forward. Ear towards knee, ear towards knee. Inhale, roll it up, exhale, rotate, ear towards knee, ear towards knee. One more time, roll it up. It should feel good. Pilates is a way, um, kind of self-therapy, self-massage for your body and building strength even within uh, the flexibility training. We rotate, so my strength is staying stable through this right hip. My stretch is being able to lengthen from that whole right side as I reach forward and return everything back up. Great, okay. Let's do a little bit of our abdominal series. So those are the five exercises that Joseph Pilates said, if you only have five minutes in the day, I think we have more than that these days, uh, do the abdominal series. So they're a little different on the ball, but we adapt them quite easily. Single leg stretch, right knee into the chest, left leg reaches long, curl head, shoulders up, stretch it in. Reach your fingers long, and let's just go reciprocal movement here, back and forth. Now, if you like, every time you draw that knee in, give yourself a stretch. Inhale, exhale. And instead of thinking that it's just in overpressure of the, the arms, think about drawing in from the center of your body, using that core. One more time, hug it in. Take that right leg up towards the ceiling. We'll lower and lift. Now, I'm starting to feel some fatigue through the head, through the neck. I'm going to let my head and shoulders rest and groove a pattern that spares my spine of stress, but develops strength in the core. One more time here, lower and lift. Good, all right, let's do those two on the opposite side. So single straight leg stretch, right leg long, left knee into the chest, curl the head and shoulders up, stretch, and reciprocal movement, and stretch, and reach. Now you can just maintain this upper body curl. We'll go here for four, and three, for two, and one. Left leg lifts, right leg long, lower, and lift, lower, and lift your choice for four, and three, for two, and one, and rest it all back down. Double leg stretch. Take the hands behind your head. So those two exercises, they also would work very well. Single leg stretch with the hands behind the head. In fact, let's do crisscross. So right knee in, left leg's gonna go long. We'll get that reciprocal movement. So groove your pattern and then add layers on top of it. So my layer is gonna be rotation. Rotating right, inhale, center for five. Rotate for four. Rotate for three. Here's two. And one. Return to the center, opposite side. Right foot on left knee, tabletop. Curl head and shoulders up. Groove your pattern. Reciprocal movement back and forth. Add your layers to it. Layer rotation for five. Here's four. And three. For two. Good work. One more time. Rotate. And rest. So now double leg stretch. You're going to hold or hug the ball with your feet. Let's first find the movement with the head shoulders resting. 
Inhale, reach the legs out, carry the arms behind, and I'm not letting them rest, keeping them elevated, and then exhale, hug the knees in. Inhale, reach, exhale, return. Inhale, stretch, exhale, return. Second level, curl head and shoulders. Inhale, reach, exhale in. Inhale, reach, exhale in. One more time, inhale, reach, exhale. Hug in, press the arms, take the legs up. Try a little twist. Can you rotate the ball between the feet, maintaining some energy of those legs? But you could do this with the upper body lifted as well. Imposing a little bit more challenge, one more time. And then rest it all back down. Great. All right, the last one we'll do of our abdominal series will be single straight leg stretch. So take the legs long, curl head and shoulders, right leg draws up, two little pulses, and switch. Two pulses, and switch. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, pull in. Last set. Good, and then rest yourself back down. Drumming. <laughs> so this is designed for a bit of an, an emotional release. Taking your anger out of the ball, gently drumming your heels. Hugging the ball in, you're using your hamstrings. It's a hamstring curl. And then release. So it's a little adult temper tantrum. That's all right. Uh, prone. We have not done prone extension yet. Okay, we've worked the front body. Let's think about the back body for a couple of reps. I think a good place to start here is your prone walkout. So bringing the ball towards your hips, towards the pelvis. And I think this ball might, might need a little bit more air, but it, it's the job done. It's still providing a challenge to my stability, and that's what I want. Drive the ground away, lift the belly up, and it's a beautiful way to plank with some support. The ball's gonna give you that support. If you want a greater challenge, continue walking yourself out a little further. Driving the ground away, maybe hugging the legs in, lengthening head to tail, breathing there. How about your shoulder blade flosses? Keeping the belly in, let the shoulder blade sink down, drive the ground away. Sink, press away. Here's three, drive away for two, and one, drive the ground away, walk yourself back in, as much of a straight, straight line as you can. Good. All right. A second set. Upper body spine extension. Letting your body drape over the ball. Bringing the hands under your forehead and starting a degree of float of the crown of the head, of the chest, into a little bit of thoracic extension. And then return all the way over, letting the head, the neck, the chest drape. Try it again. Start to lengthen. Picking yourself up by lengthening your spine. You're extending your spine through the back muscles. And return everything back down. Let's do that one more time. Find the extension. I'm really feeling my mid-back, and this is good for our posture. Pausing there, extend one arm. Bring it back in, extend the opposite arm. Bring it back in, maybe both arms. Get some extension, a little lift of the heart and chest, and then rest it, let the body drape back down. Nice. We can use our ball like the ab roller. So taking our hands and forearms to the ball, curling the tailbone under a bit, start to roll the ball out towards more of a forearm plank shape, and then pull it back in. 
Then you might have to play with your position a little bit. Knees a little closer, knees a little further back. You want to feel your core. So make the adjustment you need to not collapse in your shoulders, to drive the ground away, lift the belly up. And then once you find that plank shape, do a couple of sustain out and in of those forearms, feeling width through the back and lift through your belly one more time, resting it back down. Take the ball out, give yourself just a nice little stretch, roll the ball to the right, roll the ball, ball to the left, and back to the center. So there's one more series I'd like us to look at with our Pilates on the ball, and that is bridging. So hip lifts, there's a lot of other awesome exercises, but for today, I think this will be at least a good start to your day or end to the day. You're going to have your feet flat. Let's scoot down just a little bit. So feet flat, knees bent. Go back to your pelvic tilting. Being able to isolate the pelvis from the low back and the pelvis from your hips is valuable. It means that we're not overly stiff or immobile in regions that are important for our balance, our ability to catch ourselves, prevent falling. A lot of that resides both on stability and mobility of the pelvis and hips. So a gentle arch of the back is an anterior tilt, a gentle tuck of the tailbone and printing my low back is a posterior tilt. Be able to move freely between both of those um, directions. The problem is when we become stuck, stuck in an arch or stuck in a tilt. Both exert unnecessary forces to our spine and body. So preserving your mobility is key to aging, aging well. So enough uh, on that uh, soapbox. From here, with your feet pressing in, start to gently curl your tailbone up. Find a low bridge, right? You don't have to go for everything right away. Find a low bridge where you're standing through your feet, gently curling through the back, and then lower yourself back down. Good. Let's do that again. What a low bridge. So I feel if my tailbone is 10, I feel 10 lifting. I feel 9 just above at 8, maybe to 7. And then lower yourself back down. But one more time. Gently curling. And then pressing. Going up a little higher here. Still standing on the feet. We've talked about it before. My glute muscles are stretching my hip flexors. So by contracting the back side, I'm lengthening and opening the front, which is important if you sit a lot, important just to creating some flexibility in those hips, some strength in the buns, and then lower yourself back down. Let's do that again. Take a nice breath in, exhale, curl yourself up. <laughs> There's a, a funny term that, I, I believe it was Stuart McGill, a physiologist, exercise science, doctor in Canada term called gluteal amnesia. We have forgotten the importance, how to use our glutes. They're the largest muscle in our body. However, they're not necessarily the strongest, uh, particularly in this day and age where we don't have to run a lot. So we have to find ways to build strength into the posterior so that we have some balance between the front and back body. One more time, friends, lifting ourselves up. Find that bridge. You know, if you're feeling pretty good here, you could, I think of a cat gently pressing, you know how they press into a blanket and kind of uh, create a soft place? We're doing that with our feet, gently shifting. And maybe you can pick up a foot just enough for a piece of paper to go underneath it. It doesn't have to be high. Sometimes these smaller movements are more beneficial. Yeah. 
and then rest yourself back down. Great. All right, hug the ball in towards your back side. Extend the arms more to a T-shape. Take a nice breath in. Exhale to your left. Keep your right shoulder gently on the mat. Inhale back into the center. And exhale, rotate to your right. I'm preparing for a special workshop or panel that we're presenting to mothers of preschoolers, our MOPS group from our church. And one of the questions was, uh, can you remember a time that you felt like you just had to let God be in control of a situation and what was the outcome? And the picture that came to mind was I permitted my daughter to uh, ride a mutton. There was an event at our local rodeo called Mutton Busting, and it was for kids five to eight years old, and she begged me to jump on the back of this animal and hold on as long as she could. <laughs> and it reminded me of the importance of resiliency in our character, a quality that helps us to bounce back, to spring back, to be flexible even in difficult times. But as we're doing Pilates and yoga, we're building internal resiliency in our body. We're creating this balance of strength and stretch. We're not trying to be stiff or rigid. We're also not trying to be floppy. Find that balance that sustains us uh, for all of life. So, we'll pause there. Take a nice breath in. And then bring yourself up to sitting. One thing we didn't do was much lateral side bending. So finishing with a bit of our mermaid, with the ball to one side, opposite arm lifts, just take a side bend. Check in with that range of motion of the head and neck. And bring yourself back up. One more time, side bend. You can rotate towards the ball and in this rotation, Take a couple of breaths there. Remember early in class, we discussed the benefit of thoracic rotation, maintaining that ability of the intercostals, the oblique muscles to rotate us separate from the low back and pelvis, bringing yourself back up. Good, opposite side. Intercostals are more of a part of the breathing musculature. They're the muscles that feather and outline the rib cage. And taking those nice deep breaths creates expansion in those intercostals and it gives a degree of elasticity to that muscle group as well. And that's a very basic description. And bringing yourself back up. All right, come up to standing. And we'll just do a little uh, overhead lateral bend. So lift the arms up. Just eye bend to one side. 